Hello, Dr. Andrea Maxim, naturopathic doctor and the creator of the Maxim Movement. And this video is one of a series of videos discussing how you can maximize your immunity. The first video that we're going to be talking about today is the difference between bacterial and viral infections. And the reason why this is so important to learn is because if we can't identify what type of illness it is that we have, then we can't treat it properly. And put into context, a lot of times if it's a viral infection, we still get treated with large amounts of antibiotics. But antibiotics really aren't going to do much for viral infections. They're more for bacterial. So this is why we need to discuss what the basic immune response is, what the signs and symptoms are of bacterial versus viral infections, and then in the subsequent videos we're going to talk about how to naturally treat those things. Okay, so here we go. So here is a basic overview of the two different types of immune responses. On the left we have the humoral immune response. On the right, we have the cell-mediated response. And we're going to go over this in greater detail. So with regards to bacterial infections, these tend to trigger what we call the humoral immune response. So what's happening is we have little bits of the bacteria getting presented to different types of cells in the immune system. Specifically, what we have here are the B cells. The B cells are what create antibodies, and the antibodies then will um, attack the bacterial bits, kind of break them apart, and allow the immune system to degrade them. So what they will do is they will find the invading bacteria, and they again will take little bits of the bacteria, process it inside their cells, and then create antibodies that have specific ends that will match the bits of the bacteria. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating kind of a sequestering effect where we have these little Y's which are your antibodies that have specific ends that will bind to the bits of the bacteria and kind of sequester them from the body. They will then deliver them to what we call macrophages which are kind of like Pac-Man in the body and they will then eat up the antibodies as well as the bits of bacteria bacteria and then they will dispose of them either as phlegm mucus or get them get rid of them through the bowels. So when you're seeing things like pus when you're creating a lot of phlegm, it could and most likely be a bacterial infection as opposed to a viral with regards to the viral infections, what we have here is the cell-mediated immunity. This is where the viruses will actually go inside our healthy cells and start using um, their own machinery to recreate their army. So that's why we have these little orange things here showing the virus kind of replicating within the cell. So what will happen is we have a different type of immune cell called a T cell that tr constantly travels around in the blood system. And when these um, natural s healthy cells get infected, they actually send out these little triggers on the outside of their surface. And these triggers are kind of like a beacon saying, something is up inside me, I don't quite know what's going on, but I think you might have to kill me. The T cells, as they're traveling around, will then look for these little beacons, and when they find one, they attach themselves to that cell, and then can actually start triggering a replication response in order to cause lysis or complete um, killing of the infected cell, and that way the virus is then sequestered and can't go on to replicate in the body. So when it comes to signs and symptoms, this is what we're looking for. For bacterial infections, we're finding that they're a lot more localized to the sinuses, to the throat, to the chest. We will often see phlegm, and that phlegm will be thick and different colored, whether green, yellow, bloody, or blood-tinged. The infection will often last longer than 10 days. So if you're finding you're just not able to recover um, as quickly as you'd expect to, it's most likely bacterial in nature. And you will often have a fever. And that fever will usually be greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. When it comes to viral infections, what we're looking at are more widespread symptoms. So this is when you get the shakes, muscle aches, um, sweats. It's not necessarily localized to one specific place. 
There may or may not be phlegm present, and usually it's clear or can be a little bit cloudy, but certainly not as thick and um, phlegmy like as what we get with the bacterial infections. The duration of a viral infection is usually two to 10 days, and you may or may not have a fever. So I'd like you to kind of take a moment, you may have to go through this video again, to really get an idea of the difference between a bacterial and viral infection and understanding of how the body sequesters these two things. When it comes to treatment, that's where the next two videos are gonna come into play. So certainly be paying attention for those two videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. If you'd like to receive these videos consistently without having to come back and check, please go to my website, www.themaximmovement.com. Therefore, you can sign up for our e-newsletter. That e-newsletter gives videos just like these every single week. Every month we have a different theme. This month is how to maximize your immunity. Next month, we're going to be talking about how to detox your body properly, being that it will be January, so a lot of people want to kind of clean up their bodies um, for the new year. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns, do not hesitate to ask, and certainly subscribe to my YouTube channel.